This is video number nine of a series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations focused on Mathematica use and I'm going to continue that focus in this video. In the last video or two we were focusing on trying to understand what happens when you multiply two complex numbers and I used Mathematica's manipulate command along with locator to create this kind of graph. What we see here is you've got two complex numbers, two plus three I right here and negative one plus four I right here multiplying together to give you an answer over here that is negative 14 plus 5i. And the main two facts that I was trying to emphasize here was that, first of all, the modulus of the product, which is the length of this blue arrow, is the product of the moduli of the two factors that you are multiplying together. So if you figure out the length of these things and multiply those lengths, you'll get the length of this one. Moreover, the angle that the product makes with the positive real axis called the argument of the complex number is found by adding the arguments of the two factors. Let me write that in symbols here. Um, so the first one is that the modulus of z1 times z2 is equal to the modulus of z1 times the modulus of z2. And the second one, the second fact here, is that the argument written arg of z1 <coughs> times z2 is the sum of the arguments of the factors. <coughs> now technically um, this argument function that you see some displayed here is a little ambiguous. There, these arguments are defined up to multiples of 2 pi. But uh, let's just take this equation at face value for the moment. To say you want to find the argument or an argument for the product, you can add two arguments for the factors to get the, the n argument for the, for the product. Anyway, it would also be good for you if you've entered this code or if you haven't entered this code, maybe you can pause the video and try to enter that if you like, to go ahead and then play with the output a little bit just to test that it really is working. You can move these points around. For example, if this one's on the real axis and this one's on the imaginary axis, then the product will be on the imaginary axis as well. Zero degrees plus 90 degrees will be 90 degrees. Zero degrees plus 180 degrees is 180 degrees. 90 degrees plus 180 degrees is 270 degrees. So you can play around with these things to see that this, these rules are working. If you add two numbers with opposite arguments, you'll get a real answer. So here's two complex numbers whose product is approximately real because the arguments of these complex numbers can be thought of as opposites. Actually, there's something called the principal value of the argument, sometimes denoted with a capital A, RG, and that takes on a value between negative pi and positive pi, and so this one would be a positive argument, and this one would be a negative argument. When you add them together, you would get zero, if they are, are, are indeed opposites. Let me show you a couple other things in Mathematica in this video. <clears throat> um, first off, I want to illustrate that Coming back up here, this is not the only way that we could have um, inputted the point at the product of the two complex numbers. I did that based on this formula up here, a plus bi times c plus di. The real part of the product is this. You multiply the real parts and then subtract the product of the imaginary parts to get the real part of the answer. And for the imaginary part, you multiply the real part of the first times the imaginary part of the second plus the imaginary part of the fir sec first times the real part of the second. And that's essentially what I was doing here, where A and B represented the entire complex numbers. A was 2 plus 3i to start, and B was negative 1 plus 4i to start. I want to show you a more intuitive way, perhaps, to do this. What you could do is you could say, I want to use capital R-E or real part of a product. I'm still going to use this double bracket nota notation. 
what do I have here? I have really the complex number A. Now Mathematica, based on this, thinks A is initially a point, the point two, three. By doing this, I'm treating it as a complex number. The real part plus the imaginary part times I. This will be A represented as a complex number, and if I copy and paste this and multiply it, times the corresponding b is a complex number, so I'm changing those a's to b's, then this will be the real part of the product. And then if I t highlight that whole thing and copy and paste it over and change the re to im, that will give me the imaginary part of the product right here. So this is an alternative way of getting the point at the product of the two original complex numbers and maybe more intuitive for you. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this down also into the arrow part down here. Oops. Right here. And now I think I have one too many. I think the, I think this is right here. Let's let's try it. Nope. Okay, maybe I have one too many curly braces or something. Yeah, I think I do. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so it's giving us the same output. It is doing the right thing. By the way, notice if your complex numbers are small, like close to zero, moduli less than one, when you multiply them, the product will have a modulus even smaller, even closer to zero, as you would expect when you multiply two numbers between zero and one. I also want to show you that you can use a built-in Mathematica command called arg to test the argument principle here, this formula. Oops. Highlight that here. I'll enter these. Let's see. The first complex number was 2 plus 3i. Its argument is the arctangent of 3 halves, just like I defined down here with alpha. The second one was negative 1 plus 4i. Its argument, Mathematica spits back as pi minus the arctangent of 4. That is the same thing as this. It doesn't look like the same thing, but you can test it. It's about 1.81577 radians. And indeed, the beta from the formula down here gives you the same thing. And finally, the argument of the product, negative 14 plus 5i, Mathematica spits back as pi minus the arctangent of 5 14, which is how I typed it in here as gamma. Um, so that is matching what we did here. Argument, capital A R G, is mathemat so Mathematica command that's going to give you the argument of the complex number between negative pi and positive pi. Uh, it, it picks a particular angle in, in that range for your answer. So that's what I wanted to emphasize in this video. I think I'll highlight this as well and color it and focus on those two facts. Those are two very important facts about complex number multiplication. Try some more examples as well.